skies to go with that. We will have that full forecast for you here in just a few minutes, but your news starts right now. As people travel back home after the holiday weekend, we'll show you how the CDC is looking to prioritize safety for airports. Also, body cam footage shows an 18-year-old that was stopped and tased by police in front of his home. More on what the San Antonio family is saying about the incident. Local, experienced, trusted. This is East Texas Live. Good Monday morning. I'm Cynthia McLaughlin. Thanks so much for joining us right here for East Texas Live. We begin with new details as DPS has confirmed the name of a man who died after a hit and run accident in Van Zant County. The victim is 58 year old Stephen Lynn Chambliss of Canton. The incident happened on Texas I-98 around 7.30 Saturday evening. He was hit by a driver who quickly fled the scene. DPS says the driver was traveling north and sped away after hitting Chambliss. That accident is under investigation. Officials have released body and dash cam video of officers arresting an 18 year old man outside his parents home near San Antonio. But we want to warn you the following video may be disturbing. The officers involved have been accused of using excessive force while attempting to arrest Zeke Rayford on November 2nd. You can see patrol videos following the 18 year old's car after he allegedly ran a red light. Rayford arrives home and officers are seen chasing the man up to his family's front porch. Officers then deploy a stun gun as he calls for his dad. Additional officers arrive and tackle the man to the ground. Sharks police have pulled three officers involved from the patrol. Since the incident, the family has hired lawyers who claim the arrest was racially charged. A crash in Russ County. Three people are hospitalized after the major wreck that happened off the 4000 block of FM 225 South. Officials responded to this accident early Sunday morning, closing down the roadway. Texas DPS and Russ County Sheriff's Office are currently investigating the crash, saying it is a criminal investigation. Doctors this morning are bracing for another deadly wave of COVID-19 after millions of people traveled for the Thanksgiving holiday. The next surge expected as a new vaccine arrives in the U.S. for the first time. Both the Trump and Biden administrations are now gearing up to administer the vaccine. Jennifer Johnson has the latest. As millions of Americans return home after the Thanksgiving holiday, the busiest travel day of the year, healthcare experts warn there will be consequences. Unfortunately, as we go for the next couple of weeks into December, that we might see a surge superimposed upon that surge that we're already in. Doctors advising travelers to stop activities for at least a week and get tested three to five days upon returning home. Sources tell NBC News United Airlines has flown the first doses of a COVID-19 vaccine from Brussels to Chicago to be ready for distribution once it gets federal approval. This puts the end to the pandemic. The light is at the end of the tunnel. The White House Coronavirus Task Force is hoping to brief the Biden administration Monday as President Trump still fights to keep his job. Late Saturday, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court dismissed another Trump campaign lawsuit to overturn election results. The president hoping the U.S. Supreme Court will hear his case, although not sounding optimistic in a phone interview with Fox. I've got the best Supreme Court uh, advocates, uh, lawyers, uh, that want to argue the case if it gets there. But they said it's very hard to get a case up there. Can you imagine? Starting Monday, President-elect Biden will get the presidential daily briefing for the first time. He's also expected to name his economic team this week as the pandemic continues to hit Americans and businesses hard. Now tomorrow, an advisory panel for the CDC will vote on who will get the vaccine first, likely health care workers, people in long-term nursing home facilities, and things like that. Several East Texas school districts are back in the classroom today after a brief hi hiatus caused by COVID-19. Many districts opted to close their doors with concerns of coronavirus cases on campus high. 
These districts include Eustis, Marshall, Gilmer, and Rusk ISD. Today, Marshall High and Junior High schools will return to class as normal. It was another busy weekend at airports across the country as those Thanksgiving travelers return back home. Now, despite the CDC recommendation to avoid travel, airports have seen many people throughout the holiday. The Transportation and Security Administration reports more than 800,000 people passed through their checkpoints on Friday alone, just under 1 million on Saturday. As a result, health officials are preparing for another big wave of coronavirus cases in the next few weeks that could be tied to these holiday gatherings. I had to come see my grandson play his um, uh, high school game. I had to see one. You know, I hadn't seen him play yet, so this was my first time. And I really enjoyed the trip. I was worried about this virus thing, but I had to see you. Health officials say people returning home from the holiday this week should continue wearing a mask, stay distant from other people, and especially avoid large groups. We're on day 41 of our hospitalization rate being above 15%, putting a strain on our resources in Texas. But the most important of all our resources are health care workers. Alyssa Tellez spoke with a psychiatrist about the toll the pandemic has had on their mental health. We get into these professions to take care of other people. Um, which is a beautiful and wonderful thing, but often it's at our own expense and we neglect to see how our buckets are becoming less and less full. It's now been eight months since we first saw coronavirus in the hub city. And from the first case, our healthcare workers were there. We really saw some physicians, despite uncertainties, despite not having uh, personal protective equipment, uh, really feeling some renewed uh, validation of entering this calling. We also saw members of the community showing their support for those on the front lines. But after so much time, our healthcare workers are tired and frustrated that things are getting worse and not better. Many are feeling burnout, but not because of lack of motivation instead a lack of resources. That is the most morally distressing thing that a healthcare worker can experience. I want to give my best effort every patient every time all day long. Dr. Victor Test, a pulmonologist and professor, says since March he's been enduring a lot of fatigue. The longer the pandemic goes, the harder it is to, you know, to be able to commit emotionally uh, the way I would like. But the pandemic has also taken a toll on healthcare workers in different specialties. It's just the uncertainty, right? Like not knowing what we'll be able to do and how we'll be able to do it. And we're just so out of control of this situation and knowing that it's been 10 years since I had to intubate anyone. I think, gosh, I, I hope it doesn't come down to dermatologists. And it did. I mean, it has. That's why there are resources being offered right now. Texas Tech Psychological Sciences Clinic is uh, providing six pro bono sessions to any um, healthcare worker or student in the healthcare industry. But it also takes the community coming together to try and make sure we're doing our best to help those who help us. You can have the sense and the feeling of the community being invested together that lowers everyone's distress, increases the motivation to persevere and push forward. Um, and so I think that's really, I would say, the most important thing. How's Alyssa Tellas reporting? Well, Thanksgiving is in the books, so the Christmas season is officially underway right here in East Texas. People over in Kilgore were able to celebrate this weekend with their annual Avalon Fair. East Texans took their picture with St. Nick, enjoyed some festive activities. It's truly a great way to uplift the community and spark some holiday spirit. Those who brought a canned food donation for Helping Hands of Kilgore were able to get in for free. In September, we were allowed to do our Oktoberfest and the smaller uh, craft markets on the weekend. So that's why we decided to give everybody a chance to sell some of their goods again for Christmas. And if you missed out, don't worry. The city of Kilgore plans to hold several events throughout the Christmas season to get people into the holiday spirit after what has been 2020. It's also a great way to show support for local shops and vendors. Coming up on East Texas Live, more ways to help the community. I'll tell you how Goodwill Industries is working with incarcerated people to help them get back in the workforce. We'll be right back. During the four-day Black Friday Super Sale at Furniture Row, the more you buy, the more you save. 
Save a hundred bucks on every thousand you spend and watch the savings add up. Plus seven years no interest and free shipping. The four day Black Friday Super Sale on now at Furniture Row. Imagine a historic town hidden in the East Texas Piney Woods. A town with fine dining, award-winning inns, historic downtown shops and boutiques, and museums filled with history. Explore the bayou on a guided boat tour, a kayak or a canoe. Take a carriage through historic neighborhoods and tour beautiful antebellum homes. Where can you find a getaway that offers all this? Texas' best-kept secret, Jefferson, Texas. For information, go to visitjeffersontexas.com. When it comes to health insurance, don't settle for less. With AmBetter, you get low-cost plans loaded with valuable benefits. A network with hundreds of doctors to choose from, convenient telehealth options with $0 copays. Plus, earn $500 in rewards that you can use to pay for health care costs like copays and premiums. Wow. Now, that's better. AmBetter is reliable coverage that's a great value. Find your plan today. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Are you getting all the benefits you need? If you have Medicare, you may now be able to get new benefits. Benefits may include eyeglasses, wellness visits, gym membership, meal delivery, and hearing aids with low copay. You may even find plans with zero monthly plan premiums, zero copays on many services, and zero deductible. To find out which benefits you qualify for and to find out if you're getting the benefits that you deserve, let Best Medicare do the work for you. It's the four day Black Friday super sale at Denver Mattress. Right now, save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Or check out the Summit Firm for only $189.99, plus seven years no interest and free shipping. The four day Black Friday super sale only at Denver Mattress. Welcome back, y'all. Joining us now virtually is the president and CEO of Good Goodwill Industries of East Texas, Kim Lewis. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Cindy, for having me. My pleasure. So tell us about the recent grant that you guys have used and kind of what, how big of an impact that made. You know, it's really wonderful. Uh, we received an $8,000 grant from the Texas Bar Association, the Texas Bar Foundation. And the foundation um, has given about $21 million uh, to law-related programs. It's the nation's largest charitable-funded bar foundation. And so we feel really privileged that they chose Goodwill Industries of East Texas. So we know that this is specifically for previously incarcerated individuals. Do they have to be a certain age? No, they really don't have to be a certain age. Uh, well, 18 and over, certainly um, for, for adults, and it's for males and females. But we also have a grant for those who are uh, ages 16 to 24 through a different program. So if they are um, a young person, 16 to 24, they can certainly join our YouthWorks program, but any adult that is age 18 with a previous incarceration, no matter how long ago that incarceration was. So it doesn't matter whether they just got out or whether they got out five years ago, uh, they are welcome to join our program. What kind of barriers do people who were previously incarcerated face, you know, getting back into the workforce? Well, you know, the biggest barrier is learning how to talk about their criminal activity that they were incarcerated for. And so we really practice with them um, in filling out their job applications, their resumes, and conducting job interviews so that they can speak honestly and openly about it and also um, exercise the remorse so that they can get on with their lives. And many people who've been incarcerated may have been incarcerated prior to using the new smartphones. So they don't know how to use the smartphones or they don't know how to use the new Microsoft programs or Google programs. So helping them with technology is a big plus. It's very interesting, you know, the impact that this has on people, you know, coming out of jail or something like that. I used to volunteer at a place like this in Dallas. It did something similar, and it's just incredible, you know, their motivation. How long have you guys been serving this population? You know, we've always been a second chance organization since we were formed in 1975, but we formalized the reentry program in 2014, and we have served over 350 individuals in this reentry program. 
Are there any other programs similar to this in East Texas? There are no other re-entry programs. There are programs that help individuals with job services, such as resume writing and looking for a job, perhaps, but none that are um, really targeted and experience working with the barriers that this population serves. If anybody is listening to this right now, how can they enroll into your re-entry program if they're interested? Just give us a call. Um, they can ask for Walker Wagner, and he is our reentry specialist, and the number is 903-581-5422. That's Walker Wagner, 903-581-5422. Kim, thank you so much and happy holidays.